This is WFBE, the voice of Flint's community schools. Youthful voices in a song of praise. Happy voices of children at play. Let's read, said Jane. I like to read. Two plus two equals four. Two plus three equals five. C A T C A T D O G dog. Eager voices learning the three R's. Instrumental voices created by youth. The meeting will now come to order. The voice of a future leader learning the ways of free men. <laughs> Teenage voices practicing sportsmanship. Join hands, circle left, circle left, around you go on your heel and on your toe, all the way around, all the way around. Now, hell, a man there with your left hand, the right to your honey and the right and left grand. To meet your honey and your prom- Adult voices enjoying recreation in Flint's community schools. This is WFBE, the voice of Flint's community school. And now another voice has been added. FM radio station WFBE. Another voice to help boys and girls and adults live successfully in a rapidly changing world. A world which words can circle with the speed of light, which planes can span from dawn to dawn. A world in which transportation and communication make all men neighbors. Training for effective living in this world is the primary purpose of education, and communication is vital to the achievement of this goal. Flint schools accept their responsibility for the wise use of all the media of mass communication, the printed page, films, radio, and someday television. So tonight, the dedication of station WFBE marks a significant milestone in education in this community. From distinguished leaders in public life and from far cities in our nation, voices reach us here in Flint upon this night of dedication. Here are firm convictions that education by radio is a present and potent element in our development, both as individuals and as a community. From the hundred or more messages of congratulation, you hear now a few voices expressing their belief in this method of education. The first voice is that of Frank Schooley, manager of station WILL, operated by the University of Illinois, at Urbana. With the inaugural of services of WFBE, Flint joins those in the ranks of the far-seeing, service-rendering educators who believe in the potentialities of radio as an aid in the educational process. And here is Miss Judith Waller, Director of Public Affairs and Education, Central Division, National Broadcasting Company, the First Lady of Radio. For over 20 years, that new tool of learning, radio, has been serving education by enriching the lives of young people in many countries throughout the world. Dr. Franklin Dunham speaks from Washington, D.C. in the United States Office of Education. It will moreover serve the community and its most precious needs and desires to keep Flint, a city of vast industrial enterprise, in touch with the world about it. From the world of current events, we bring you a well-known voice. This is Morgan Beatty in the NBC Newsroom in Washington. Along with the entire NBC News staff, I want to salute WFBE and the Flint Board of Education in their forward-looking move in utilizing radio to bring broadened educational opportunities to the citizens of Flint and the students of the Flint Public Schools. 
The nearby city of Toledo speaks through the voice of Olive McHugh of the Toledo School. Today, you become a part of the world's great communication system. Through your clear young voice, men and women and children will come to know one another better. This knowledge will lead to understanding, and understanding will lead to world peace. Here are the words of S. Franklin Mack, chairman of the advisory board, radio and television, National Council of Churches. Nothing in the 20th century has greater potential significance for the strengthening of our democracy than the media of mass communication. We are only beginning to learn how to use radio, films, and television to extend the benefits of education to all the people. Most local listeners are familiar with the voice of Hazel Markell, commentator with the Mutual Broadcasting System in Washington. The possibilities provided by education by radio are vast and challenging. And the taking to the air of the Flint School's own radio station is certain to be a source of great pride and interest to the entire community, to teachers, students, and parents alike. From the headquarters of the National Education Association comes an important opinion expressed by Belmont Farley. Our schools began as an extension of the home. It was the purpose of the founders of our schools to keep home and school close together. That purpose has always been fully recognized. The instrument to which you are now listening will bring to your home, as regularly as you care to receive it, information of great value to you in your daily life of great assistance to you as a citizen, and will help you develop those skills which you need day by day. From the far places of our nation, faster than the flight of an eagle, come many messages of confidence and satisfaction in our achievement. From New England. You have long pioneered in extending the resources of education to the entire community in Flint. We know of you in Boston, we are delighted to read about this further extension of the educational resources. From Atlanta, Georgia, Uncle Dan sends greetings to his many young listeners in Flint. Hello, boys and girls. My, but this is an exciting day down here at Froggy Hollow Farm. This is a day to which your Uncle Dan and all his creatures on the farm have been looking forward. For this is the day that Flint is dedicating its new radio station, WFBE. From far to the south comes the clear voice of Texas. Hello, WFBE. From deep in the heart of Texas, we here at the University of Houston's non-commercial educational broadcasting stations send to you in Flint, Michigan, hearty congratulations as you join us in educational broadcasting. From the Pacific Coast comes word through the voice of Arthur B. Friedman of the University of California, Los Angeles. On behalf of the Radio Division, Department of Theater Arts, University of California at Los Angeles, this is Arthur B. Friedman extending a warm hand of friendship and congratulations to the newborn FM radio station, WFBE. Our neighbor to the north rejoices also. Here's the greeting of Miss Gertrude McCants. Director of School Broadcasts for the Providence of Manitoba. Congratulations and sincere good wishes from Winnipeg, Canada, to the Flint Board of Education on the opening of station WFBE. We in the radio branch of the Manitoba Department of Education know of the high standard of school broadcasts presented by the Flint School Radio Department. And we are sure that with the opening of your new FM station, even better things are in store. We should like to send our congratulations and good wishes and to wish you every success with the new responsibilities and opportunities presented. And from across the wide Pacific comes this message from Constantino Bernardes from Silliman University at Dumagati in the Philippine Islands. Greetings from across the world to the new educational station WFBE at Flint, Michigan. It is with great pleasure that we learn of your new undertaking and as we Filipinos would say, Mabuhe, WFBE, long live, WFBE, or still a more free translation, hooray. We're grateful for these worthwhile thoughts and kind words. The recorded messages which you heard are only a few of the many which will be aired on WFBE from 2 till 4 o'clock tomorrow and Friday afternoons. It's thrilling to know that we're one of the more than 140 educational radio stations in the nation. 
some 40 of which are owned and operated by the public schools. But it's more satisfying to realize that we have the interest and cooperation of the people of our own home community. Speaking for the Board of Education is Mr. George V. Gundry. The Flint Board of Education has pledged itself to give the people of Flint an educational program second to none in the nation. Tonight, the dedication of station WFBE is another step in that development. The ability to express oneself well and to use printed materials with understanding have long been important aims in our schools. Today's world demands even more skill. We used to get by with reading, writing, and speaking to our community neighbors. Now radio and television have made it imperative that we learn to communicate with world neighbors. America must train this and future generations to use these tools for the good of their communities, their nation, and their fellow men. That means that schools must accept a responsibility for the educational use of radio and television as well as for tra the training of young talent in the broadcasting field. Thanks to the generosity of the Mott Foundation in giving us $10,000 for FM equipment, tonight station WFBE becomes a reality. Your Board of Education feels that it will become an important service in the classrooms of Flint that we will have fulfilled another obligation to the boys and girls of this community. Thank you, Mr. Gundry. And now we hear from Dr. Spencer W. Myers, superintendent of school. I am very glad to add my voice to those voices that you have already heard in the dedication of station WFBE. It was not too many years ago when the voice of man could only be extended to the strength of his vocal cords. Now, through the miracles of mass communication, particularly in radio and television, he can be heard and seen around the world. Inasmuch as this is the case, it is particularly fitting that public schools consider the educational implications of such a medium and plan to have youngsters understand both the skills that are necessary in carrying out uh, such a project, but also to understand the increased responsibilities that go with the extension of man's voice in this way. We are very happy that Flint schools join the relatively few so far public school systems which have training and facilities to make this medium better understood. Thanks to our five local radio stations, Flint schools take to the air with a record of broadcasting which dates back many years. Their wonderful cooperation and their genuine interest in the development of our own school station have been both encouraging and heartwarming. Today, all of the stations have aired congratulatory messages, news stories, and salutes. WFDF is now carrying this dedication program, and WTAC will carry a delayed broadcast at 9.30 tonight. All five stations accepted our invitation to participate in this program. Here's a greeting from the staff of station WBBC. Flint Radio takes this occasion today to salute its younger brother, WFBE. A youngster in many respects, but like any of the youth of America, one with glorious opportunity ahead. That very youth is its greatest attribute as we at WBBC view it, for youth is unfettered by unpleasant experience. Youth is dynamic. Youth is able to dream apart from the hard and fast rules of everyday existence, and because of all of these and many other romantic but real circumstances, will go on to heights that others have said and will continue to say are impossible to attain. Nothing is impossible for the youth of America, so it has always been and so it will continue to be. Radio... Flint Radio, youth, and the Flint school system will benefit from the things soon to be accomplished at WFBE. Education, through the use of the most modern tools of the age, will continue to improve and benefit all of mankind. WBBC and the other radio stations of Flint are proud to welcome our new junior partner, WFBE. A message from Lester W. Lindo, manager of station WFDF. 
On behalf of Flint's pioneer radio station, WFDF, I wish to congratulate the Flint Board of Education and the faculty and members of the Flint Public School System, particularly its radio department, on the inauguration of our community's newest radio station, WFBE. This new service to our community marks a further extension of education by radio, which was pioneered over a quarter of a century ago when WFDF began broadcasting programs in cooperation with our schools. It is a matter of particular pride to all of us at WFDF that the countless programs of these many years have now culminated in a full-grown educational radio service which will be brought to our city through this fine new station. We have been proud to bring to the public programs on behalf of our Flint schools. The advent of WFBE, however, does not mean a termination of this meaningful partnership in the field of education, but rather an extension of it. WFDF, of course, will continue to bring to the public programs produced by and with the cooperation of our schools. We will also continue to assist in the future as we have during the planning stages in the programming of the Board of Education's new station. Centuries before radio was discovered, teachers had recognized the power of the spoken word as the most effective means of instruction. Through this new station, Flint's school system is extending the influence of the teacher, taking him out of the confines of one limited classroom and making the whole community his classroom. We believe that the establishment of WFBE marks one more tremendous stride forward in the progress of Flint. WFDF will watch with pride and interest WFBE's growth and development. W. Eldon Garner, manager of station WKMF. Thank you, Don. It is a genuine pleasure for me to share this opportunity with others in offering hearty congratulations to station WFBE, to those responsible for its operation, and in particular, to the capable leadership directing affairs of this new educational voice of Flint. With WFBE experienced staffers, the Flint Board of Education may well be proud of its new position in the broadcasting industry, for it is here that we are favored with an expression and direction of responsible people, respected across this land of ours for their educational radio ability. Indeed, Flint will take a position of leadership in this area, as we have expressed it so wisely and soundly in others. Radio as a most powerful media for good will be harnessed to serve best, the educational interests of young and old alike for the Flint area through the new facilities of WFBE. Staff members at radio station WKMF join me in offering you best wishes for everything good in the years ahead. The staff of radio station WMRP. Congratulations, WFBE. Everyone at WMRP joins with all Flint in a salute to a new radio station. We know all Flint, including its commercial radio stations, will derive benefit from the fine training and on-the-air experience given young people by the school system's own radio station, WFBE. From the management and staff of station WTAC. H.G. Wells said human history becomes more and more a race between education and catastrophe. And so WTAC warmly welcomes radio station WFBE on the team running this urgent race. Today, as never before, it is incumbent upon the broadcasting industry, the nation's greatest mass audience media, to stimulate interest, to provoke thought, to inform. And through our Flint Board of Education station, broadcasting may now serve the ascending generation with specific directness. Moreover, its programs can become the vantage point from which parents may view the nature of their youngsters' education and, by listening, participate in it with them. And so, from Detroit, on behalf of Mr. George W. Trendle and Mr. H. Allen Campbell, and from the Flint staff and management of the Trendle Campbell Broadcasting Company, we of WTAC and WTAC-TV welcome and wish well WFBE, our new sister station. 
The good wishes of our local broadcasters mean much to the school radio staff, for they speak for long years of pleasant association and promise continued cooperation in the service of the youth and adults of this community. The schools have been grateful, too, for the interest and encouragement which Flint parent-teacher groups have shown the radio development. Many of the radio receiving sets which our schools now used were purchased by the PTA. Tonight, on this dedicatory program, we extend our sincere thanks to our parent-teacher members and invite Mrs. Maxwell Golden, President of the Flint Parent-Teacher Council, to participate in our program. Thank you, Don. I hope that all of you parents will visit the WFBE studios on the Oak Grove campus and see for yourself the fine facilities which are here for the use of our boys and girls. I hope, too, that every teacher will invite the parents of her children to visit the classroom to listen to a school broadcast with the children. I am sure that our parents do not realize the contribution that radio can make in creating good attitudes, stimulating interest, and building good citizenship. I am amazed at the research, the planning, the writing, the rehearsal that go into the preparation of the program series and the teacher's manuals to accompany them. This is an area of curriculum development that is truly in keeping with the times in which our children live. On this night, we parents again express our pride in the progress of our schools. This program would not be complete without a few words from the man who many years ago caught the vision of radio use for and by students in the Flint Public Schools. Mr. Lowell Grant, principal at Whittier Junior High School, served as radio chairman for the schools from 1938 to 1949. Under his leadership, the value of radio was proved, and the establishment of a radio department accomplished. Mr. Grant, on this dedication night, we pay tribute to you for the early development of radio education in the Flint schools. We hope that WFBE will ever be a credit to your vision and to your leadership. It is thrilling and soul-satisfying to see these rooms transformed into a modern, well-equipped radio station for the training of boys and girls and young people in our schools and community college. During my long service in the Flint schools, I have been proud of many developments, but tonight I am especially proud. Dr. Ross Snyder of the University of Chicago expressed my sentiments in his written message to the WFBE staff. As I see it, the city of Flint takes a step toward greatness as it establishes its own educational broadcasting station. An educational broadcasting station gives a new dimension to young people's idea of school and of themselves. The school system is now a part of the whole community life, and young people are privileged to take a responsible attitude toward the community. They are to produce and broadcast programs of thought and feeling worthy of our American democracy. I am proud and happy to have had a share in bringing WFBE to the Flint schools. In 1949, Miss Ola Hiller came to Flint to direct the work of the newly formed radio department. Under her guidance, WFBE has come into being. Miss Hiller, we want to hear from you on this dedication program. Thank you, Don. The opening of WFBE marks another milestone in school community progress. It represents more than a quarter century of cooperation between local stations and school personnel. It testifies to the leadership of Mr. Lowell Grant, who worked long and faithfully to bring radio into the service of the schools. It is a tribute to those high school teachers who, a decade ago, provided radio training and broadcast experience in the speech curriculum. Mrs. Helen Hardy Brown at Central High School, Mrs. Nelda Topolka, and later Fred Harrington at Northern High School. It is evidence that our citizens want every possible opportunity for the boys and girls of Flint. It is another example of the generosity of our good neighbor, Mr. Charles Stewart Mott. We express our deep appreciation to Mr. Mott and the Foundation trustees 
for the $10,000 gift for the purchase of equipment. We also take pride in the work of the Building and Maintenance Department of the Flint Schools in remodeling the interior of one of the Oak Grove buildings. We invite the citizens of our community to visit our studios to watch our boys and girls at work. If you find it convenient, drop in tomorrow evening from 7 to 9 when we shall again hold open house for our school patrons. Look for the WFBE Tower and find an entrance to the building nearest the tower. The WFBE Tower, rising above the buildings and trees on our beautiful campus, holds different meanings for different community groups. To those educators who first caught the vision of radio's service to education, it is a symbol of accomplishment. To the children and youth of our community, it is a symbol of opportunity. To teachers who have come to regard radio as a teaching aid, it is a promise of greater service to the boys and girls in their classrooms. To parents and other adults, it is a symbol of educational progress matching that of business and industry in our dynamic, rapidly expanding city. But to the staff members, the tower is all of these things and something more. From the antenna mounted at the highest point, radiate the waves which carry our service to the minds and hearts of youth. So to us, the tower is a symbol of grave responsibility, a constant reminder that the facilities themselves are neither harmful nor good. They are neutral. They can carry words of hate and unrest, or they can radiate the noblest and most inspiring thoughts of men. Whether our facilities become an influence for evil or good depends upon the effectiveness and wisdom with which we work from day to day. This realization will keep us ever mindful that ours is a sacred trust, a task to be shared by our co-workers, our fellow teachers, and community leaders devoted to the principles of right living and to the ideals of democracy. As we plan and work together, we shall constantly evaluate our radio service and endeavor to make it a vital part of curriculum development so that it may contribute to the building of good citizens. We shall offer the best which we have been able to discover of what is real and can be trusted. We shall strive daily to make WFBE a voice which helps the Flint School community move a little further along the path to the good life. Thank you, Miss Hiller. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to identify myself. I'm Don McComb, and I feel that I speak for the hundreds of students who have enjoyed and profited from the training and experience in radio during our high school and junior college years. To a few of us, this training will mean our livelihood, but to most of us, it will mean a greater understanding and appreciation of broadcasting as it affects our daily life. Through our experience in school radio, we have learned valuable lessons in teamwork and sportsmanship. We have known the thrill of service to the boys and girls in our classrooms. We have caught a vision of a better world, which young America must help to create. This is WFBE, the voice of Flint's community schools, broadcasting on a frequency of 95.1 megacycles on your FM dial. This concludes the transcribed formal dedication program. Stay tuned to WFBE for further congratulatory messages from former students, radio personalities, and interested friends of the Flint schools.